Hey everybody, Coach Troy here. Now today, looking at our best and worst Atari games on the 2600, we're going to do a little Marvel versus DC. And to do that, we're going to check out a man who is spidery and a man who is super. Let's get to it. Now first up, we're going to look at Superman because that is the game that came out first. And uh, this is a pretty highly rated game. You know, a lot of people like this game. Uh, I, I do want to say it's a little, despite being so highly rated, it is a little underrated. It often gets outshined by adventure um, because of you know very similar games. I believe this is made off of some of the ideas of adventure, and, and it you know, just happened to come out first. Um, but this was a very innovative and groundbreaking game for the Atari. It did a lot of things that nothing else had done before. Now, it came out in either 78 or 79. I'm still seeing some discrepancy there between when exactly it came out. Some people say it was December of 78. Some people say it was 79. So, not sure exactly. I don't know. Does a month or two really matter? Probably not. But it was one of the earliest and first Atari games to come out. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, it had a lot of new things going on with it. Uh, first of all, it was the first game to have multiple screens. Everything else was just one screen, and then you would play on there, you know. But this, you could go all over. You would travel the city of Metropolis. Um, you had multiple areas like uh, the Daily Planet. You could walk through the subway. And it had actual characters doing things off screen. So even though you couldn't see them, it didn't mean it wasn't happening. Also, this is one thing that a lot of people didn't even realize. It, you could pause the game. By hitting the game select switch, you would actually pause your action. Now, in this game, you are Clark Kent, and it's got an actual story in there. So you start out Clark Kent, you go up, you're trying to get to work, and of course, what's the worst thing a villain could do to you is make you late for work? Terrible. That's right. Lex Luthor blows up a bridge with his gang, and then you gotta track them all down, throw them in jail, and get that bridge back together, right? And then do the most important thing you can do, and that's get back to work, because that's the American way. Let's check this sucker out. All right, starting out as Superman. Gonna go to the phone booth, and look at that. Now I'm just mild-mannered Clark Kent. On my way to work with what? Lex Luthor and criminals? Blow up the bridge? Oh no, now I can't go to work. See, it hardly seems like a bad thing, right? I can just take the day off. But nope, I gotta get in that phone booth. And start chasing down criminals. Haha. <laughs> See, I can actually just fly up and grab them like so. Which is kinda neat. And then from here, take them to jail. Looking at that top left of the screen, that shows how many more criminals you gotta get. Oh, and that right there is a kryptonite satellite. That will, uh, if you hit that, then you will lose your powers and you won't be able to fly anymore. All right, and also you're going to have to collect these parts of the bridge. That there is Lois Lane. She looks like an airline stewardess. But, if you ever get hit by that satellite and lose your ability to fly, you just walk up to her and she will give you a kiss. And that will give you your powers back. This here is uh, the Daily Planet. You can actually go inside. And if you get lost, whatever, this is usually where Lois Lane is. If you lose your powers, you can usually go. You actually go inside the building here. Yep, there she is. Get a kiss. Also, you have the bit if you hold your button, you can use your vision to check out other screens. Though, the action doesn't stop when you do that. Those kryptonite satellites will still fly around, and they could get you. Aha, look at that. I got Lex Luthor there. He's got that weird helicopter thing, that go-go gadget copter. Now look at that. I think he looks more like Spider-Man than Superman here, right? This is actually the subway station here. You can go in there, go through the subway. Oh no! Got hit by the satellite, and I lost my ability to fly. This is kind of annoying for you. You just kind of got to walk around until you find her. <gasps> I saw her. I used my x-ray vision. Oh, got a kiss. And I got a criminal. All right. All right, all the criminals are now in jail. 
but my task is not done yet. I gotta collect all these bridge pieces. All right, got that bridge together. And now, the most important thing. I changed back <laughs> into Clark Kent. Now I gotta hurry up and get my butt to work. And there we go. So yeah, I really like that game. I think it's super fun. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that you have a whole, you know, it's like a whole adventure. You know, it's got that intro. It actually kind of, I guess that's kind of like a cutscene watching that uh, bridge blow up in the gangs. <laughs> like running away with their Tommy guns and whatnot. Yes, it had the kryptonite satellites which are super obnoxious, but you know, you gotta have some kind of challenge in that game. Superman is not gonna die, um, <laughs> but he will be slowed down. And I think that's the first time I saw a video game kiss, or at least heard it with that little chime from Lois Lane. It was either that or it was in, I think, Lazy Jones on the Commodore 64. That, but anyway, yeah, that was, a, that's a super cool game. The helicopter, also extra annoying, just like the bat from Adventure, right? I mean, it was pretty much the idea came from that, even though this came first. But overall, a very solid game. And so, like I said, it is a highly rated game, even though I think it's still a little un underrated. And it definitely deserves the title of being one of the top Atari 2600 games. Now that's a pretty solid game, so can Marvel handle the innovative strength of Superman? Well, let's see what Spider-Man's got to offer. Now this is a game that gets a lot of flack for being a bad game. Although I think a lot of that recently just is... I can almost blame the angry video game nerd for giving it a lot of probably undue hate. Of course, if you don't read the manuals, games are gonna be harder than they need to be, all right? That was the same with Superman, too, so I'm not gonna give this one any flack for that, all right? Read your manuals. Anyway, this one came out several years after Superman, so they were definitely several advancements that had happened. But this is not to say this wasn't innovative in its own right. The web mechanic here was very, was, it was new. It had not been done before, at least to my knowledge, from what I've read. So it was a really cool mechanic, and it was surprisingly smooth the way it works. But in this one, it's not Lex Luthor, but the Green Goblin that we're going to try to take out is, of course, villains and their bombs always trying to blow things up, right? So let's see if we can get to the top of the tower and disarm that smart bomb. Let's check this one out. And now for the adventures of a very spidery man. Now, Spider-Man does not crawl up the building. He uses his web like so. You can shoot it to get up high. A uh, little hint, you can actually go up and down once you have the web sh uh, attached. And also, if you shoot at an angle, not only does he go, but you can go down and you get some swinging in there. That's going to help you catch more criminals. And you got to catch the criminals because that's how you get points. And that's how you get more webbing. You can swing into the bombs and defuse them, but it's pretty tough. Uh-oh. Oop, a little mess up there. Yeah, if you mess up, you will fall. But you can catch yourself. At checkerboard here is the super bomb. And you can't just shoot your webbing into it or walk into it. That'll cause you to fall. you got to get your webbing there and swing into it like so. Then, once you do that, you will get double your points. Whatever points you got from catching criminals and defusing bombs will be times two. And that is how you rack up your score. Bama! See? Once you know that little trick at the end, this game is so much easier. It loses that impossible feeling that I think a lot of people felt when they're playing it at first. Goblin's a little early on this stage. There we go. I gotta get a few criminals here, otherwise I'm not gonna not gonna get any points and I'm gonna run out of webbing. Bama! Look at that. I don't think I'm gonna have enough webbing to get through here. Come on, criminals, appear. No! Bye. 
Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Yep. Yeah, that stage gets tough. 900 points. That might be a new record. Yeah, this one is a lot of fun still, okay? I don't think it deserves being called a bad game. I think this is actually pretty dang good. I will admit, it. again, you have to read the manual and you got to do some playing around to figure it out. That's a lot of Atari games though, right? Uh, but this one is definitely more fun than it gets credit for, okay? Once you figure out some of those little uh, mechanics and getting that web to work, yeah, there, there's a lot more to it than you first think. Still, it can be super frustrating when you keep slipping and that stupid web timer just tick, 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 tick slides away. But enough of that. Let's compare these two games and see which one reigns supreme. All right. Going on the graphics. The graphics, um, I'm going to have to give to Spider-Man. I thought it was funny. Superman actually looked like Spider-Man, I thought. Um, but the graphics overall... I'd say Spider-Man has the edge. It was a few years later, but they did a better job. In the sound category, Superman had a little song when you finished. Yeah, it wasn't that great. Spider-Man's intro music, though, was, was actually pretty solid. So uh, they both were kind of annoying with the flying. You had that, that noise, and uh, when Spider-Man is shooting his web, it sounds like uh, tearing construction paper. I don't know. So the sound... I'm going to have to give the edge to Spider-Man still. In replayability, I'm also going to have to give the edge to Spider-Man because you're always fighting for that high score. Yes, in Superman, you are trying to get a faster time and you can you know, keep running through to get that. But I think Spider-Man's replayability is a little bit better hunting for that high score. And the mechanics to get it were a little neater with the... Uh, when you disable a smart bomb, you get the double points that you got for that round. So, I gotta give the edge to that. So in the end, the winner out of these two games is... I still like Superman better. Yeah, I give the edge to a lot of those things to Spider-Man, but just playing the two games, I just love the fact that you go on that story and adventure. Superman is just... I don't know. It's just such a, a cool little adventure. It's almost like a... The more pulpy version of Superman from back in the day when he wasn't, you know, fighting doomsday and whatnot. No, he was just trying to stop gangsters from making life a little bit more miserable in Metropolis. So it, it doesn't have that big grandiose feel to it, but it is just kind of a fun little story. And yeah, I'm not going to play it several times in a row. I'm going to play it once and I'm going to be done for a while. But I'm going to be able to get back to it and have some more fun with it every time I play it. All right, I know the story, but I'm still going to enjoy it. So even though I really do like Spider-Man a lot, and when it comes to actual comics, definitely Spider-Man is, is probably my favorite, hands down. That was the comic I collected when I was a kid. God, I wish I still had those comics. I think they'd be worth something now. And I was never a huge Superman fan, you know? Hey, I'm invincible and invulnerable. Kind of boring, right? Still, out of these two games, I'm siding with Superman. So that's my take on a little Atari 2600 Marvel vs. DC. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, and if there's any other battles you want to see. This is Coach Troy, and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for joining me as I start my journey into the world of retro gaming. If you're interested in my other hobbies of fitness or board games, check out my other channel. Anyways, this is Coach Troy. I'll see y'all next time.